What's going on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBC Pulse and the host of Pulse Radio in the building for a historic episode. Like, bro, this is big. We have history, black media history, black reality TV show history right here in the building. We have some members of the cast of College Hill Southern University season one, what I guess they considered I guess that they considered the black real world. Is that is that true? Was it the black real world? Let me. I was too young to watch. Let me know. Is that the real description of it? Uh, no, I don't think it was black. I think real world was like like so random. We had a purpose. So. Yeah. HBCUs always have a purpose. That's one thing for sure. But this is amazing. I want to say first of all, thank you all for coming on. You know, as we know, College Hill Celebrity Edition is out. Um, and, you know, it's on episode four now, you know, so it's been a lot of discussion about College Hill. So the big thing is that I wanted to, to pay respect to the OGs, you know, like y'all are the original reality TV show stars. And also y'all are the predecessors of this College Hill franchise. So I want to give you all your shine and your light. And so I want to go on and start with introductions. So I want to start with you. We got to start ladies first. So talk to me. Let us know who you are. Hi, everybody. I'm Kenza Andrew Saunders. I'm from the very first seasons in College Hill, OGs. Um, some people knew me by a few nicknames. One of them might have been uh, No Draws, but I wear panties now. So um, I'm a mother of six. I'm married to my college sweetheart. He was actually on the show with me for several cameos. And I'm just so proud of everything we accomplished. It was historic. So happy to see the series living on in a reboot and just so happy to be here today. I'm Gabriel D.A. Langley. I I don't even know how to follow Kendall at this point, but <laughs> <laughs> original season of college here, yeah, I was the uh, frat boy. I was in Alpha Phi Alpha and Kappa Kappa Psi at the time. Uh, I was a senior and uh, I was just trying to manage everything and just be a positive representation of what HBCU life could be. Uh, and as Kendra said, man, I'm just proud to to be part of this franchise and see what it's doing and where it's going. Glad that they're considering the things that we accomplished as far as pushing media for the HBCU lifestyle. And uh, I just can't wait to see what more is, uh, there is to offer for us. Mr. Delano Mitchell Holmes, uh, Los Angeles, California, Southern University graduate, College Hill season one, uh, you know, the cool guy that, you know, it, bro, you know uh, man, just just glad to be a part of this, man. Reaching back, you know, uh, kind of explaining, giving giving a little light hour experience on campus doing College Hill Southern University season one. You know, we we started just gangster ish, so you know, we gotta let everybody know how we was rocking back then, man. But it's been a it's been a crazy run. These are my loved ones right here, my good friends. Uh, almost 20 years now. You know, a lot of times people fall off, you know, like. Like a bad off. bag of dope. <laughs> These are my folks, man. Like, we not the, we weren't the black, we, we weren't the real, we were like the real, uh, a different world. Different you world. Know? There you go. That's real. Man. That is real. We were that makes real sense. Different world. Everything, everything that, like, you know, growing up in L.A., not, you know, having family in the South, we saw a lot of, I was addicted to school days. I was addicted to a different world. So, you know, HBCUs was always my move. Um, and I always wanted to go to Southern because of the Bayou Classic. So everything that kind of happened in those other shows, we went through that and experienced it in real life. And you know what's so interesting within, you know, just the discussion of HBCU media, it's so crazy just talking about school days, College Hill, and even bringing in Drumline and the Quad, which I was a big, you know, supporter of, and even now All American Homecoming and now College Hill Celebrity Edition. There's not a lot of media that reflects HBC life, and you know we saw four rays of it into the early 2000s, like with this season of College Hill and Drumline. But I think that that's what made College Hill so amazing is that it was that look into the real life of HBC students that you don't really get a chance to see. So I want to ask you this, and I believe that we're going to see a contrast because I, I've interviewed students that were that were involved in this season of College Hill at Texas Southern, and I asked them, how did you find out about College Hill? And they said, oh, we didn't even know about it. We found out about it when it came to Texas Southern. So I would love to hear, how did you find out about College Hill Southern University? 
So I'm actually like the baby of the crew because I was 18 years old and I had just come to college, um, had no clue what was happening. There literally was a line in the union. And I just, you know, black people, we see a line, we just kind of get in it. It must be something free, right? So lo and behold, it was the audition line for College Hill. And I went in there and honestly, I was just myself. They asked a lot of questions. And I think when they heard that I was kind of a party girl, and when they heard that my father was the dean of the College of Business, it was like, oh, jackpot. So literally before I was out the door, they offered me a spot on the cast. And of course I took it. My, my experience was a little bit different. I, I was in the band. And so I think we was at band practice one day and uh, I guess the casting crew came into the band and they talked to the band director. And then the band director stopped band practice. He came out, he said, hey, these TV people want to use one of my fantastic people. <laughs> and then he said, um, they said they wanted to use uh, uh, someone in a fraternity and what bigger fraternity than the marching band as a representation of the university. And so he made everybody stop and fill out these, these applications. And so kind of like everybody else, uh, Kendall and Shalandria, I, I filled out the application, wasn't even really, you know, concerned about the show. I was just like, hey, I got to do it. So I'm going to do it anyway and not even worrying about it um filled it out we went and finished band practice they they came out with cameras and filmed the band when we was rehearsing a uh, couple of days maybe weeks passed and then i got a phone call at about 2 a.m and um it was i guess one of the producers they was like hey are you gabriel such and such i was like yes they was like and you're you're alpha i was like yes and you're in the band i was like yeah who is this and they say, like, oh, I'm sorry. Well, this is such and such uh, from the uh, TV show that we we're trying to cast. And um, we want to invite you to be on the spot. I was like, I, well, it's 2 a.m. I'm asleep. So can I think about it and call you in the morning? <laughs> and so I slept on it. And then um, they called me back next day. I was like, hey, we need an answer. I was like, okay, well, fine. I'll go ahead and do it. And I later found out that they actually called someone else thinking that that person was me and offered them a, a spot on the show and it wound up being a good friend of mine. And later on, we fell off because they had to call and tell him that they made a mistake that he wasn't oh me. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Yeah, so um, I, I haven't talked to him. I, I see him around. I saw him around L.A. a couple of times and we kind of said what's up to each other and so forth. But our, our, our friendship never never was the same after that i never heard that story i mean it's it's not public knowledge but i thought it'd be funny to share right now but yeah oh this is not, it's not only funny it's an exclusive all right <laughs> <It's an exclusive. laughs> up in here hey man listen we getting all the exclusive i feel like woes right now i feel like chams for basketball right now we getting the real information so college hill to a point not only was it to come up for you it also i think sort of exposed people to, to me, that, that's how it looks like to me. Because if you know they're call, if they're calling someone and, and and they think they're you, right? And then you upset because it wasn't you. Why you ain't happy for me? It wasn't right. sound like me. I'm just saying. And I, listen, you don't gotta say nothing. All right. I'm just gonna say that. Be happy for my blessing. Like, come on, man. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Because your blessing on the way. If you if you have my blessing, your blessing gonna come up be happy for you. All right. I'm just saying. All right. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this on on probably why they was really mad. They are from, they're LA native. And uh, I think that, you know, this may have been one of those things that they felt was going to catapult their entertainment career. And I felt bad for them. I did. But I was just like, at the time, they was talking about tossing us a little money. And I was like, yo, I'm a broke college student. So <laughs> I'm not going to turn this down. But hey, it is what it is, bro. Right. No, I'm, and, and honestly, like, that makes sense. And like I said, everybody's journey is different that's one thing everybody has to understand like your blessing might not be this you know what i'm saying but it but your blessing you can get you to work team the grind people gonna see you you know what i'm saying so that's i wasn't expecting to hear that now that's different but mr delano so talk to me sir so how did you find out about college hill uh sidebar gabe did you say they was hating because you made it on college hill they didn't hey hey bro I'm, I'm gonna have to call you later and really give you the scoop. I'm not gonna you gotta tell me about that right one, here, man. But 
Yeah, it was it was a little salty, man. And it was it was it was one of those people that you was like, yo, we 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 way better than this, bro. Uh, fake friends. They got fake friends out there. I gotta figure out who this cloud is. Anyway, give us uh, the next. Who was back it? to the question. The question was, how did I was find fake. out? So, I was I was in the uh, the broadcast department, and you know one of the professors was telling us about it. So of course, you know, we always hear about stuff on campus that's coming up and. Some of it happens, some of it doesn't. So, again, I went to the union, like everybody else, and, you know, saw the lines. Um, and the, the application was like 20 pages, bro. Like, a real, I don't know if you ever bought a car, but uh, it was like buying a Mustang. I mean, like, it was, they wanted all your information. But I filled out the first two pages. Like, first two pages, and just wrote some wild, some wild, just wildness on the other pages, just across the page. F that. Hook, hook me up. I'm on. I'm the guy. You, whatever. And turned it in. Um, during the pro interview process, they were interviewing people and asking, like, who's this person on campus? Who's who's the, the funny guy? Who's the loud guy? Who's the, the pop? You know what I'm saying? So my name came up a few times. And once they saw the application, they brought me in. And Tracy Edmonds was like, I heard a lot about you. Tracy was like, um, you know, the, the producer of the show. So I was like, yeah, all that's cool, Tracy, but I got a ball to pick with Kenny. She's like, excuse me? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what can, What baby face that, man? She's like, what are you talking about? I said, man, it was about 83, 84. We was in L.A. hooping. And, you know, I, you know, I knew he was doing this thing with his brothers. And he was like, hey, bro, I'm about to go solo. But I need a name. I'm like, you know, so I was like, well, what you gonna go with? He was like, they gonna call me Smooth Groove. I was like, man, that's whack. I mean, you, you can do way better than that. You know what I'm saying? You you got the nice hair, you fair skin, you got the baby face, you know. He was like, that's it. I'm like, what? I'm like, nice hair? He was like, nah. I said, you're gonna call yourself fair skin? He was like, no, baby face. He went with baby face. I said, man, three months later. Whoopal pill came out. I ain't heard from him since. <laughs> she was like, oh, my God. He never told me that. So now everybody in the room looking at her like, it's a 19-year-old kid talking about how he gave Babyface's name 20-some years ago. And she didn't catch on. So once she finally caught on, she's like, oh, my God, you're on the show. And that was that was the start of it. From Smooth Groove to Babyface. He still ain't paid me. He gave us a watch. Though. He gave us... He gave us really nice watches. Listen, uh, I, I, you were talking about babies. I know you see my. I need to see my face. Like I, I am over here trying to hold it. Some of my laughter that crept out. I was like, man, you good? <laughs> I just want to say first and foremost, you good? All How right. How does the guy's story? How does the guy's story? Uh, do they remember in the application where it said draw a picture of yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Who did you draw up? Uh, I, I drew I drew myself with a giant afro with a big afro pick in it. Yeah. That's the only reason I remember it because kind of like what you said, how you just like like just did whatever in the app. I did like just some stupid shit in the app and I drew the stupid ass picture of myself and then I turned that shit in. Bro, they was asking way too many questions, guy. They was like way too many questions, bro. Uh, they asked y'all to draw yourselves. What? Okay, wait, okay, listen. Hey, it was their first time too, bro. It was their first time too, yeah. We're doing audible. Wait, we gonna have a question about the questions. So what was in the application? What? What are the questions do y'all do y'all remember? Height, weight, you know, favorite things to do, favorite uh you know, it, Bro, that was so long ago. I don't yeah, remember. It was, it, was, it was just it was just random stuff, man. I don't remember my job application. I, I don't know. It was just it was a lot. But it's you know, not it was that, like who's this person on campus? Uh, you know, it was, it was just crazy. We like, but we had no idea what we were doing. None. So you gotta imagine this out of the blue, twenty pages. You just like, all right, uh, just you know, write whatever comes to mind. And maybe if we would have took more, took it more serious, it would have been a different outcome. But that would have been as genuine. Like the fact that. We BS our way on the application <laughs> to television. You know what I mean? It was wild. 
I, I'm almost speechless here because I because like it sounds like like you were applying to be a boxer, okay? It, 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 it sounds like a preschool application. It sounds like a couple different things. I'm like, wait a minute, what? But listen, I salute the hustle. All right, listen, a part of history. I salute yeah. the hustle. All right, so check this out. So for me, I was born like I said, I was born in 1996. All right, so my recollection of College Hill probably goes 207 which is really like i didn't know about the first couple of seasons of college hill but i was channel surfing and i vividly remember watching some of virgin islands but i didn't really know what i was watching because you gotta understand teen Titans was my theme back in the day you know power rangers was my theme back in the day so i didn't know about none of this other stuff although i did like different word i did like different word back in the day i, I, I was an old soul but i need y'all to let me know about some moments that are just amazing that you would like to share with the audience about your experience filming College Hill Southern University. Because as of right now, it is, for what I understand, I'm quoting Ray from my interview we did, we did with him earlier. Those episodes are locked in a vault at Southern University. Literally. Like, we, literally. Like, a literal vault? <laughs> like, we, 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 used have a real, we used to have a real <laughs> Jaguar on campus, right? Lacova. I think they, I think they put the Southern Hill tapes in there. In his little equestrian, uh, his little habitat. Is, is, yeah. is it guarded? Is it guarded? Like, is there guards by it? Because I want to. Like, <laughs> it might be, bro. I don't know. It's like I don't know. Though. It's just weird. I, I, I can tell you. You got, you got two, you got two I'm church mothers sitting there, right? So I, I had some memories, like you know, I, I remember when they, when they, like, again being online. You know, hanging with my good friends all night, sneaking in about three, four in the morning. Then five o'clock one morning, the lights just come on, and I just see army fatigues, right? Oh my god! So I'm like, oh, what's going on? They didn't follow me to the crib, and they is everybody yelling. So we halfway woke. Jay, why I'm like, Gabe was my roommate, so I'm like, Gabe, what's going on? Bro? I look up. It's the it's the uh, what's they call them? Uh, uh, the Marine Corps, the uh, ROTC. ROTC. So they want to teach us a lesson because we didn't do something we were supposed to do. Man, they got us outside at 4 35 in the morning. I got on FUBU sweats. You know, we doing push-ups, sit-ups, all TC style, you know. It's foggy, it's cold. I'm like, wait, I ain't signed up for this part. This wasn't the application, bro. So then they bring out a tree. A tree. A tree, bro, like a 12, 15 foot tree, and tell us to pick it up on our shoulders. And we got to run. I'm like, bro, first of all, I'm not in the military. I ain't nothing military about me. I like, I didn't come in for that. We run it on campus, bro, in the middle of the night, five o'clock in the morning with a, with, a, with a log. So we all supposed to be carrying this log, right? Kim was four seven. I was going to say that, bro. The laundry might be 5'1". Veronica might be 5'2". So it's me and J.Y. and Kevin Mack carrying this heavy-ass <laughs> log, bro. Hey, bro, they had they had me and, and Delano on one log on the front and back, and then they had Kevin Mack and Jabari on the other one. So And they not having – they have no chemistry, bro. This is like, this is like <laughs> a size 8.5 and a half or a size 15. They not – so, bro – Kevin, they cursing each other out. Jabari, like, yeah, you know, he, he all this, he did it like, so we have to. I want to, I'm gonna pause for a second. We have to find Jabari, <laughs> or we have to get the original episodes on air somehow so the world can see Jabari. Like, oh, man, bro. This brother, yes. this brother was a genius, man. Like, a real genius from Chicago, and he was so left field that people didn't understand it. We understood it because we had to deal with it, but it took us a minute. Jabari was a man, but that was one of the craziest. Hey, it's, it's funny you brought that up, bro. I still got a scar on my shoulder from that long 20 years later. What? And that was I can just show. remember Kendall jumping up. Just hitting the log, like talking. He's like, I had just walked in from the club. I was, Jay, why I was drunk. I was drunk, completely wasted. Jay, why I was drunk. 
<laughs> completely wasted trying to carry that log and do push-ups and jumping jacks, man. That was horrible. But what I, think- I remember is Nina and I were not there. I feel like I had stayed over at my boyfriend's and came back, and I had missed it, and they made us, like, clean the bathroom with the toothbrushes. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Man. Yeah. It was not having that. And that was the worst because we didn't attend to this group meeting, this building, this team building exercise. So our punishment for missing the log carrying was Nina and I had to scrub the bathroom floor with a toothbrush. And you can tell, you know, Kinder kind of sound like Willie Gilbert, right? Like, you know, Kinder, Kinder's our little Southern belle. So imagine her oh. and Nina, Miss America, <laughs> scrubbing toilets with toothbrushes. Big, I'm talking about big toilet. I know. Big Real toilet. toilet. <laughs> big toilet. Right. Used. Yeah, that toilet. was memorable. That was memorable. Yeah. Used toilets. Yeah. And then we came back and they had took the TV out of the suite. Yeah, like we like, come on, man. Kid, you gotta tell them about tell them about the night of the premiere. <laughs> that was crazy. The night that the show premiered. You know, they had dubbed me as no draws at this point. And it was madness all through Baton Rouge on the radio. They were like, Kenda, if you're out there, you know, call us. We'll we'll give you shelter. We get back to campus. We had a watch party. When we get back to campus, there's a riot going on in the back of campus where all the dormitories are. And when I pull up to my dorm, I drive this, like, drop-top Mustang or whatever. I put the top up because people were, like, looking in. They rush the car and they start shaking the car from side to side while I'm sitting in it. And I didn't know what to do except sit there and wave at everybody. And I mean, they were throwing trash cans. They were lighting stuff on fire. It was like, you know, it looked like a riot, literally like a riot. We went from we went from school days to do the right thing. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and it was to the point where I had to have an escort on campus. Because I couldn't walk from like the dorm to my classrooms, I pretty much flunked that whole semester because I couldn't go to class. So I, let me—I I, I gotta, you know, spotlight you with that. So you were a freshman coming into this experience, right? You were a freshman, right? True right. freshman, a true freshman. So talk to us about your experience being a freshman, being on a vehicle such as college here. Like, how was that? You know, it was really crazy because I feel like I was not prepared for this. You know, I had literally just left high school and I'm on a campus. I, I'm not even like settled into my dormitory yet. And they tell us we're moving into this, you know, this dorm suite together, all of us. I wasn't able to really make friends because, you know, all people knew was whispers. Like, oh, that's that girl. This is the girl who they're filming. You know, like you have a camera following you around when you're a brand new student. It's a little unorthodox. Um, So I didn't really get to, like, develop a a strong friendship network, except once the show came out, then everybody wanted to be your friend. Everybody wants to sleep with you, you know, just all this stuff, just because you were on TV. So for me, I guess, like, my husband was the first guy I met before we started filming, and we clicked. So for me, it was always like, okay, well, I know he's really here because of me, because he was here before the cameras. But after that, I always kind of looked at people, like, a little differently, like, are you being my friend because you want to be my friend or because we were on a reality show? So as far as like the social side of being on a show such as College Hill when you're coming into college. So one thing that we speak a lot about now is about mental health. And I think that that's something that's key. And even in this season, we're seeing India's journey with validation and acceptance with her being an influencer and her really trying to be on College Hill to find herself and really grow from this experience. So what was, where were you at mentally through all of this? Because being a freshman, you're you're straight out of high school and you're thrusted onto BET. So where were you at mentally? It was, I don't know, it was probably a dark time because I didn't feel like I had access to, you know, anyone that really could help me through that. You know, um, we were on campus and it was like, you know, everybody wants you to do stuff for ratings or people are in your ear telling you, oh, do this, you know, uh, sleep with Jabari or, you know, people were trying to get you to do stuff for ratings, but you're really a real life 18 year old who's never done college before. So I guess I would 
I would think that my sister and my mom were probably the, you know, the people that I could go to and talk to and that were always going to be there for me. And they kept me in check, but I had to grow like mentally. It was a lot on me. It was like willpower. Like you're going to do this. You're going to finish school. Cause I mean, I wanted to drop out several times, you know, I got pregnant. Um, the idea of going back was like embarrassing almost. People just expected you to like blow up after this show and not have to actually be in school. So I had to do a lot of like soul searching. I had to spend a lot of time with myself and like reevaluating what I wanted in life and learning that whatever happened, I was going to be okay because those were going to be the choices that I made and not what people expected of me. Wow. I, th I think that that's powerful. And this segues into a question I have for you all. And I'm going to start with you, Gabriel. So like in general the impact of the show on your lives so y'all had amazing moments now i don't know if i can count the log situation as an amazing moment on, on the show I, I don't think i could count that but it seems as if you all had an amazing experience on the show but in general what was life like after filming or even when the cameras weren't on you and you were walking the campus what was life like for you I mean, it changed. Um, as I said, I was a senior, so I had three years under my belt at Southern University. I kind of made my own um, path, I guess, to social acceptance and popularity to whatever extent I had. Uh, I'd already pledged Alpha Phi Alpha and KK Psi, so I'd already kind of established myself in the social network of the university. So when College Hill came on, it kind of catapulted everything into a whole nother light. I was not just, you know, JY, that's the, you know, the guy in band or the alpha. I was JY, the guy that's in band, that's an alpha that was on College Hill. So now um, people from other universities that are alphas and in KK side, they're calling people that knew people to get my phone number just so we can talk on the phone or I can talk to this person. And so it, it really started to expand my network of people, the people that I talk with, uh, the exposure to other things, other opportunities as far as entertainment. Um, and for me, ultimately, it inspired the entertainment aspect of my life again. Um, I was a childhood actor uh, that I had put that aside, you know, at the point where I was like, you know, I'm going to go to med school. I'm going I'm to do this. Or I'm going to do that. I'm just going to have a professional career in life. But after College Hill, it it showed me that it's OK to dream or to aspire to be in this world of entertainment. It's not um, it's not so far fetched anymore if that's what you really wanted to do. And so I actually uh, I dropped everything and I pursued it. Uh, I took a couple more years um, from that. I moved back to Dallas, uh, took care of some family business, and then I moved to Los Angeles. And I lived in Los Angeles for a little over 10 years, uh, played music, performed music, traveled, tour on trumpet, uh, did a lot of acting, did some movies and things like that. And I really enjoyed that aspect of my life, and I really wouldn't change for nothing in the world. And eventually I found out that if I would have took the path of going into a professional career of medicine, I probably would have ultimately end up walking away from it because... It just really wasn't what I wanted to do in life. So college healing for me, I I think it gave me a direction and um, it gave me the opportunity to, to accept a part of myself that I really was trying to dumb down or put away and just kind of go with the social norm of, hey, you need to be a lawyer. You need to be a doctor. You need to be this versus, you know, accepting that you have a passion for something else. And it's okay to shoot for that passion or go for that dream uh and whether you succeed big or succeed small it's okay because as long as you're happy with the decision that you made nothing else matters i don't know a lot about college Hill southern but i want to say it's not my fault that i'm ignorant because once again i could not watch the show because it's locked in a vault and gabriel said church mothers were guarding with their prayers you know in, in the hats all yeah. right so he so, saw, you know, I wasn't able, I wasn't able to see it. So I wasn't able to get to give get any background information. But one thing that I saw a few, like a few years ago, 
uh, I saw a clip of College Hill. It was a trailer. And I saw one specific storyline that was spotlighted about a white SGA president. And I think that that was spotlighted in some of the episodes. So I want you all to give me a verbal history of that because that is interesting. Listen, bro. First of all, uh, Wayne, Uncle Buck Hayden. Yeah. Uh, Buck was in a band with JY. Buck was a. Uh, he got his name from Uncle Buck, the character that John Candy played. So that, that can kind of physically put you in the mindset of what he looked like. But Buck was the blackest <laughs> white boy I had ever met at to that point. Um, like, Buck has a married of African Americans as a black son. Like his brothers are gangsters. Like these some of these folks, they was like characters, but they were genuinely they were authentic people. Bro. They weren't faking the funk. And yeah, like Buck just wanted to be the SJ president. So we like we can get you in there, man. So yeah. it was it was nice that myself, Buck, and Mister Hanky. Yeah, like I said, we were the cabinet members, so we just we sit there and try to figure out ways. You know, folks were spending five, six grand on their campaigns in college. Like families really pitching in, and, yeah. You know, putting together these packets to pass out and big, big flyers and banisters. Man, we went to Walmart, got white sheets, black spray paint. Uh, cardboard signs, sticks. We had second lines that made it look like the Fight the Power video every three days. Like, so the whole ca- we got a big second line, the band, you got hundreds of students. We got the Fight the Power sticks. We got Vote for Wayne Hayden. We giving out Kool Aid, uh, popsicles, and condoms, man. Pistols and Scantrons. That was our whole that was our whole campaign. That was our platform. Condoms, Kool-Aid, Scantrons and Pencils, man. And Buck did it, bro. He won. Wow. And you know, we just that 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 was you gotta think, that was another time in life that all this was going on at the same time. So we got the we got the first white uh SGA president of the Story Black College, you know. I'm 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 in the mix of that. We, we still filming College Hill. Um, it was just a lot going on, bro. It was just a lot going on, and it was crazy. Like Buck is, like I say, to this day is a good friend of mine, and we we often look back and like we we was in charge of all of the finances. We had to make sure, you know, like um, like we. Uh, the, the concerts for homecoming and spring fest and all the student activities basically we were, we were responsible for making sure you know that that was popping and we, I, you know looking back we did a great job man I think we did a good job but as far as fun that, that's why I go back and say man like I hear everybody's college experience it, it don't add up bro. we didn't know what we was doing it for he was just like hey man I want to know if y'all are coming uh, play through campus now just to give you an insight Southern University, there's a front of campus and there's a river that kind of goes through it. And then there's called the back of the campus. The back of the campus is more of the down to earth uh, type of students. Uh, and in good- Front of campus was the honor students. That's- <laughs> <laughs> Honors, dorms, and athletes. Yeah, so um, back at campus, I mean, we cranked up this second line band and we started marching. And in fine Louisiana style, everybody and they mama, at 10 o'clock at night comes rushing out of their dorms in pajamas and literally lights the campus on fire. Fight the power video, man. And it was a party till midnight with this second line band. And like he said, man, they had some homemade um, campaign paraphernalia out there just doing it guerrilla style. But we had $500. $500 hey. was our budget. And like he said, man, uh, Buck, is he's one of the most genuine people you'll ever talk to, ever meet. He's uh, during that campaign, after the campaign as SGA president, he he truly, truly had the heart intent of the people of the student body. Uh, but he was he was about having a good time, man. Ooh. And that's what he kicked that campaign off with was, man, we go do this. 
but we're going to have a good time while we're doing it. And it's probably one of the most memorable and most talked about because I can't tell you how many times I heard people say, man, how y'all let this white boy come in and, and be an SGA president? It's just like, I mean, he was good for the people. You know, he, he was honest. He he wanted to do right. Why not give him an opportunity just because it's an HBCU? You know, so at the end, it was very controversial. But at the same time, man, it was, you know, history made for the university. And it was a great person that was able to make that issue. And I can segue on that because that was my first year on a college campus. And I'm like, oh, my God, yes, Black Power, HBCU. And my first SGA president is this big old white boy. And I'm like, what? This don't even add up. What's going on? And then I met him. And I'm like, oh, I understand it now. I get like, it. <laughs> if you, you, honestly, HBCU Pulse, y'all need to interview Uncle Buck and tell him I sent you because I love him. he's amazing, hilarious. Yeah, he, I recommend that, bro. trying to make a movie about the entire thing, kind of like Bruce Jenner was Bruce Jenner and they did The Great White Tiger because... You know, he was playing the white quarterback at Grambling. They could have made a movie about Uncle Buck as oh, the great Jaguar because, I mean, he was really down. He was for the people. And, I mean, if it was going to be the best person for the job, that's what he was, white or yeah. black. He was the Don't get it person. twisted. Buck was, Buck was Caucasian, but he was a minority. He got Italian. Yeah. Like, don't. He wasn't. <laughs> He, I'm telling you, man. He, Buck, Buck was in, the, Buck was in the trenches, bro. Like he was, he was willing to any, any black issue. And and, and you know, the, the whole purpose of HBCUs, we, we kind of, I, I used to hear that all the time. Man, how y'all got the white, like JY said, man? How y'all got the white boy as the SB, SGA president? Well, that just showed you the growth of. The mindsets of the young black people at Southern, like we saw, what nobody else could see in the person, opposed to the skin tone. You know what I mean? Like soul is soul, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a genuine person is just, is just that—a genuine person, no matter where he come from. With like, go to Buck House, Buck Duck, man. I'm talking like I, I I rocked with that dude. Like Buck was from the streets. You know, a ghetto boy, and at the time, that that that's who represented Southern University. And like I said, and we we traveled all across the country, man, and, and it was always the same thing. Upon first meeting him, they like, oh, you know, what's the what's the, what's the gimmick? <laughs> After hanging with him, oh, I get it. Yeah, mm. yeah. We had I'm, some good day presidents. We had David Banner too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny story about David Banner. He's actually the only SGA pre uh, president that was able to get a beer truck license to come on campus for Spring Fest. Oh my! God. He also had the dash of the guards on top of the union with the snipers. Hey, <laughs> what? Hey, David Banner has been a wild boy, so, bro. Southern time. University, brother. Let me tell you something. I'm I'm I'm, I'm pro HBCU. It ain't nothing like their yard, man. There ain't nothing like it, bro. A&T, A&T, they get out. They, they get out of A&T. I will. I will. Fam, you too. I gotta get the fam. You fam, fam, they get out of fam. Get out of fam. Rambling is my son. You know, third home, baby. J State, but Southern University, none oh. like. It. On the point about Uncle Buck, the white SGA president, I think that at HBCUs we sort of have this duality of representing for our culture and safeguarding black spaces. But in leadership and me being an SGA, I, I can say this, is that we have to look at who's the right person for the job, you know? And I think that that's the problem that oftentimes within leadership that we miss is that we don't put the right person for the job. Sometimes, especially in SGA, we pick the person that we think looks the best in the position or the person that we think is the coolest. And even yep. now to this day, that's the problem. So if Uncle Buck was good for Southern University, that's cool with me. You know what I mean? And and I think that's the thing that we have to understand. Who's the right person for the position? So I want to ask y'all, so it's such a dual T when it comes to HBCUs because you never know who you're in a dorm with. You never know who you're in an organization with. You never know who you, you will meet on campus, especially a school such as Southern. So you had Mr. Hanky, Corey, that was on the yard with y'all. 
So tell me about your experience with him. I'm going to start with you, Gabriel, because y'all was in the band together. So tell me about your experience with Mr. Hanky. Man, my experience with Hanky was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, Hanky gave me my crab name. Mm. Uh, so uh, on the yard, everybody knows me by Junkyard, and the abbreviation JY. But um, I'm, I'm going to actually put this out there because a lot of people don't know this. But Hanky... Um, when we was marching to the to the field one day and we were playing and uh, he turned around and as a tr as a freshman we we got we got we got the grunt of all the work so at this point i'm exhausted I'm trying to play and he turns around he said man you sound like trash you just need to burn your trumpet you need to go and put your trumpet in a trash compactor you are just junk and from that point on everybody started calling me junk yo <laughs> And I, I, I hated the idea of it because I was, I came in Southern University on a scholarship, a, a jazz scholarship. And so here it is someone, I, I gained a lot of awards playing trumpet. I got a scholarship playing trumpet. I'm the furthest thing from junk, yet everybody is calling me junk. And so <laughs> my initial meeting with Hanky was the worst because I actually hated the fact that he gave me that name. Uh, but down the years, he became one of uh, one of the one of my closest allies uh, on campus. Being in the music industry, being an entertainer, uh, I remember when he brought uh, uh, a group to the to the campus to perform, and uh, I got a chance to work with them, man. And so I, I, I I've been able to watch Hanky from a personal perspective of his growth from being in a trumpet player in the band. To being uh, the guy that cut CDs on campus, to the guy that cut and mixed all the um, the stage performances for the Greek shows and the concerts, to being this super producer, and it's it, I have absolutely nothing to do with his success, but I am so proud to know Hanky and everything that he's accomplished, man. And um, I, man, every chance I get, man, I shoot him a message here and there, just cheering him on, man, tell him how proud I am of him. And man, to see, like, I think I just got a message that he's now a best selling author. I think you mentioned the book earlier, uh, something about the yeah. HBCU. Yeah, well, uh, so, so the, the book is the HBCU Experience Movement, is the second edition about the HBCU. The second movement. edition, and it's, it's a bestseller on Amazon. If you got it, uh, go check it out. I'm going to look it up. But man, just seeing this, this guy just day, day in, day out, he is hustling, he is doing his thing, man. He is constantly moving forward. and Everything he has coming towards him, man, he's definitely earned it. So, man, shout out to him all day, all day, man. He's a good dude. So the, the Lionel, so you he would you put him in, you know, the conversation about you know the SGA president Uncle Buck. So, what's your what's your experience briefly with Mr. Hanky? Uh, I mean, Hank hung out every day at one point. Like, so again, I, I I was I was a rapper, and Hank was the super producer even back then. Like to this day, I, I could go back to like my emails, and I have some of these some of the original beats that he's gone on to 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 to, to make platinum award winning songs with and I got him in my I got him in my email like oh I'm tripping I should have I should have did this California song a long time ago you know but <laughs> we would like we we used to be in the room all, all night bro just making beats rapping like I say um uh, he, he was he was my he was the go-to DJ on campus, and we would always have freestyle contests. And I would just always know what, what song to drop, what beat to drop, when to put the little drops in, when to take the beat out. So it was almost like we were cheating. And, you know, like one thing about Hank, he never changed up. Uh, he was here for the I – mean, I live in L.A. He was here for the BET Awards. We hung out. And whenever I'm in Atlanta, we hang out. Homecoming, we always – Try to you know catch a, at least catch a brunch on Sundays after we done towed the yard up on you know Friday and Saturday. But Hank a stand up cat, always been the homie, you know, always been a like I said, a straightforward brother. And I got some Hanky stories too, but we gonna, gonna keep doing myself. All right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, So so can you you have any any you know stories with Mr. Hanky because you were a freshman, so you know you know. Right, I was a freshman, but. So Leno was a rapper, and Leno actually took me under his wings a little bit. Do you remember when you wrote a rap for me, Leno? 
<laughs> and I remember you took me to Hanky's dorm one night. He he lived in the front though. Was he like in yeah, Brad? Yeah, Whitehall. Well. In Whitehall. And it was his whole dorm was like a studio, right? His whole studio set up. His dorm was a studio, and like y'all would go in the closet and put, like, stuff on the wall, like something. And I remember being so nervous because I knew Lena was like an established rapper on campus, and Hanky was like this producer. And Lena, Lena wrote me a rap, and it was like, "You want to question what a pimp do, bitch? I pimp you. Walk like a mad coat." Glide like my eyes do. 411, but for but stilettos, yeah, I'm fine too. Don't let. How did it go, Lano? And there's no way you remember that. Yo, <laughs> how do you remember? Like, you got a great memory. He wrote me that's not, that's not like Biggie was right for Kim. I remember being like too nervous. Yeah. Well, you saw that Biggie was right for Kim. You said sound like Biggie was right for Kim, man. You know? <laughs> no, it really was. He was my ghost. Lano was my ghost writer. Oh my God, man! That was those some bars though. You was you was writing some some bars. Wait a oh, minute, man! I don't rap no more like too much. Like, I, I still I still dabble a little bit, but I was sick. I was as sick as at one point in time. I figured that you know it's just dope because at an HBCU you never know who you're speaking to. You never know who you're in class with. You never know who you're in SGA with. And for Mr. Hanky to have twerk you later, smile. He has a new song with Usher and the City Girls. I just think. That that is really dope, and that's I think oh, living my best life. Uh, yes. Oh, don't forget our best California. life, uh, Yo, I could go on and on about really the songs, but yeah, we could do this all day. But well, hey, for sure, like just straight up bangers. And hey, also, it's wobble, man, the wobble is a is a showstopper, man. You drop that in the club, and everybody's going at it. And, and, we, and we and we still go half on the bottle to this day. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> <laughs> to this day, walking right amongst us. On Keep camera. making all the money, but we'll still go ahead. Hey, hey, but listen. Hank don't pay for nothing in Atlanta. Nothing. Mm. Mm. If you go hang with Hank in Atlanta, you gotta first of all, you gotta get up around nine, and you gonna go to seven clubs before the night over with. Wow, that's dope. Hey, listen, that's pool. You know, that's that pool you get at an HBCU when you popping on the yard, man. But I, I, I rock with it. I just really think that that's dope that y'all, you know. Y'all rock when y'all were on, on campus and that all that was going on in this generation of Southern University. Like, y'all was big. Y'all was popping. So I want to talk to you guys really quickly about just the legacy of the show because like we all said, like, you are the first Black reality show. And with that came a lot of perks and it came, you know, a lot of struggles to triumph and also a very interesting social experience for what I've been hearing. But in general, now with the, with the celebrity edition out now, with Ray J and Nene and Big Frida and the crew. Like, what do you think the legacy is of the show in HBCU history and really even just in TV history? I think the legacy of College Hill is that it was the first of its kind and it showed people what it really was like to be at an HBCU. Because personally, I know a lot of people wanted to know, why did I go to Southern? Why would I go to an HBCU? They were like, you're intelligent. You speak well. You should go to a PWI. And to me, it was ludicrous, but this was our opportunity to show the world what we were made of. And I believe the legacy speaks for itself. You know, enrollment skyrocketed. You know, people wanted to be there. You know, they saw the trials and the triumphs. And I think it humanized us and normalized us. Because let me tell you, I had white friends that were watching this too. And I think for them to see a whole cast of black people in real life, you know, and it's not scripted and seeing like, wow, you guys have these emotions. It was like they got to be a fly on the wall. They got to have a seat at the table for that episode in that moment. And I think that that, that was wonderful information for them to be able to get. I think the legacy of the show is exactly what Kendall said. Um, we At the time, we didn't really realize what we were, um, uh, like the potential of what we were actually doing. We, we were, you know, we was all young. We were um, a part of this, 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 TV show, you know, this cam camera filming crew following us around campus. We knew that it was something, but what it was at the time, we were just, we were just college students that just so happened to have cameras following us. And we got a chance to kind of do a couple of different activities throughout the process. But once the show actually dropped, once the impact actually happened, we realized that, you know, yeah, in fact, we had made history not by just being the all black cast on the first all black cast reality TV show, 
but by exposing the greatness that HBCUs actually have to offer. And I think the legacy of College Hill is just that. It needs to continue to expose the greatness that each one of these HBCUs have to offer, not just Southern University, uh, not just TSU, um, but, you know, even the smaller ones, Lincoln University, Paul Quinn, uh, um, your Morris Browns, even though it's, it, it's, it's a little bit bigger and it's in Atlanta, but it still needs the support and energy of the community to understand that you can get quality education, you get a quality experience from an HBCU. And some, one thing that you said earlier that I 100% agree with, and I, I often tell people, you don't always go to college for the education and a diploma. Sometimes you go to college to figure out who you really are. And that's, I think, ultimately what College Hill did for all of us. It allowed us to look, look at ourselves from a televised perspective, and we got a chance to really see who we were on this show edited or not edited, but the essence of who we are and really dive into our personal growth and determine where we wanted to go in life with what we did and what we accomplished with College Hill. So, I, yeah, continue cheers to that. It almost mirrors the legacy of HBCUs, period. Predominantly, you know, white universities have always been there. And the HBCUs created the opportunity for the have-nots. Right, for those that might not have gotten it <clears throat> if it wasn't uh, for the, the different various HBCUs. Uh, I'm a proud graduate of a black college, a historic black college, and I take that with me every day. You know, um, in Los Angeles, a lot of kids don't know about HBCUs, didn't, didn't have an idea of what it was or what, what they stood for. Um, College Hill opened a lot of people's eyes, man. And being one of the originators of you know of the show, whatever draws you to higher education is what gets you there. A lot of people, like we used to ask, like it used to be girls on campus, like why you came to Southern? Oh, cause of Lano. Not you know, like literally, he was he was funny, he was cool. We wanted to meet him, or you know, our 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 enrollment went up tenfold the semester after College Hill premiered. You know, and it's just the, the legacy lies in the experience. You know, I was able to meet a lot of a lot of great people. You know, network with a lot of people, further my career, start my career, pledged Omega, probated on national television. It, it was a lot of first. So the legacy lies in in the first, the first to do. You know, the first to highlight. There's real black college living, unscripted, uh, not really knowing what we would get out of it. Just we were all dreamers, bro. And as, as a people, we all have ambitions and, 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 and dreams and goals that we want to attain and accomplish. And the black college gives us just as good of a chance as any other school does. Uh, Southern University was the perfect fit for me. I believe I might not have made it at any other school just for being the person I was and things I, I was into. But I thank God for Southern University. Uh, I appreciate BET, College Hill, Tracy Emmons for the opportunity to properly expose us. Like we could have, they, they could have, you know, everybody has a, everybody has a, a, a sob story or a horror story or things that went in, went on in different productions. We don't really have that as much. You know, we we, we were all able to kind of, you know, move on and be successful in life. And that that's all attested to the people that we're around, the friendships that we were able to create, the bonds we kept, and the love and the education we got from the yard, man. I really appreciate you all for coming on. Because this, this is history. Like, I, I think that it's important for us as HBCU outlets to tell the history of what's going on at our institutions, but especially the media side of it. So I want to just really quickly before we go, I want to know, you know, where can we follow you on social media and also how we can support you? This was so much fun. Thank you so much for having us. You can find me and my family on social media at that Kenza Love, T-H-A-T, 
K-I-N-D-A-L-U-V, love. Also, we have an episode of House Hunters that's out right now, and I'm working on a children's book, so hopefully you can see a lot more of us very soon. You can find me on all social media outlets, Gabriel D.A. Langley, or I am Gabriel D.A. I think Facebook is the only one that's Gabriel D.A. Langley. Everything else, um, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and uh, I just got on TikTok. I, I don't know what I'm doing on TikTok, but it is I am Gabriel D.A., but I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, you can check me out on all those social media platforms. Currently, I have a, a business management firm, and uh, I su support small businesses and larger businesses in getting government contracts and managing their businesses. Uh, one of my biggest platforms is uh, FUBU Mobile, which is a mobile division of the FUBU clothing brand. Uh, and so, yeah, just check us out. You know, uh, check out my page, and that'll link you to everything that I'm doing. And again, man, I'm just trying to be a positive influence to everyone somehow some way whatever i can do to continue to support our community grow with everyone and hopefully everyone is doing positive things with with their platforms oh man get your pencils ready so listen one thing sun university taught me how to do is hustle brother and that's what i'm doing man uh first of all instagram lano lano03 l-a-n-o l-a-n-o-03 lano lano03 that's my main instagram page um created a uh, <clears throat> a lip gloss eyeliner uh lip scrub makeup line it's called sassy sugar lips sassy sugar.com um you can find us on instagram at sassy sugar underscore lips some of the products real fly i'm fly we promote right now man we got to do a little promo lip scrubs eyeliners eyelashes uh um uh, lip glosses we got makeup palettes it's all it's all real flashy real classy man if you're in la holla at me you want a snowball i got my own snowball company man it's called snow business ain't no business like snow business i'm all throughout la um i just dropped the film be looking for dirty cops la uh on hulu tubi and peacock starting in october we're doing Dirty Cops, the series. I'm about to film a film in New Orleans, uh, Dope Smack, where I get to play my, I'm a fat superhero, bro. I've been wanting to, want to be a fat superhero forever, bro, so it's my time, and I finally got it. Dope Smack, we're doing a Dirty Cops series, man. We writing, producing, me and JY linking up. Kendra and I got something coming up. Man, we just try to grind and get it, man. If you, uh, you're in the cannabis culture, uh dopeaholics 420 on uh instagram check us out tap in if you want it i got it if i ain't got it i'm gonna get it so get it while it gets good you know? i love hey listen i love it and for the audio for the audio radio audience he has the assortment of all of the products for the lipstick line and and, and the whole line right there you got to go to hbc post on youtube to see it, we love to see it, man. We love to support. We all over, man. We all over, man. Hey, man, we making it happen, man. You got, you, you got, you got so many businesses. You are funding LA. All right, all right. listen, <laughs> <laughs> you the governor. All right, you the governor in LA now. Oh. Man, I'm trying to be, man. I, I work in homeless services. I work for Volunteers of America, man. I'm doing this youth bill where I'm taking 84 kids and we kind of we revamping the neighborhood, building a uh, not from scratch, but taking you know abandoned homes and kind of uh giving them rebuilding the homes giving them a uh helping them get their ged their high school diploma and as well as a jump start at the uh construction trade so that's what i do nine to five and then from 501 to whatever I'm, I'm hustling thank you once again so much for coming on a lot of great gems dropped a lot of game we're gonna make sure tap in and support you so thank you so much for tuning in and also make sure to check out college's celebrity edition on bet plus new episodes every thursday thank you so much for tuning in you're listening to pulse radio